Hi, I'm Howard Abrams. I have 10 minutes to talk you into giving each show a second chance. Have the right perspective and expectation, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Just remember, eShell is a shell, not a terminal emulator. I use both eShell and vTerm. I'm going to talk and type fast, as I have 10 reasons for you to try eShell again. Number one, it's an Emacs REPL. I mean, check this out. Let's start up eShell here. And let's just type a, a Lisp expression. It works. As a shell, the parents are, well, kind of optional. Number two, it's also a shell. While eShell may look like a shell, well, like bash, you should view it as a ripple with parentheses less ex expressions. I mean, this makes sense because a shell command with options like this ls command looks like an s expression. You can mix these two modes. Shells can call subshells, which return their output like a function call, like this bash command. Now, in this eshell example, I use the output of a text file as command line arguments to rip grip. Notice how I use braces to state that it is a call to an eshell expression. But we can mix Lisp expressions and shell expressions. All right, allow me a contrived example. Now, notice I use a good old set queue to create a variable. Yes, those are global Emacs variables available everywhere. Now, in eShell, the wildcard actually creates a list. Now, this variable assignment doesn't work as you might expect, as set queue in eShell is still set queue, and it assigns variables and pairs. Now, to make a Lisp in eShell, we use listify. Now, without parents, eShell is in shell mode, which means that words are strings and variables need to be prefixed with dollar signs. Now, a command can have both eShell and Lisp expressions. As you can see, here I've got a call to rip grep, but part of it is a Lisp expression. Remember the differences. With parentheses, eShell treats it as a Lisp, just like the last line in my example. With braces, eShell follows these shell-like rules. First, if it looks like a number, it's a number. Otherwise, eShell converts it to a string. Quotes, like a shell, groups words. Now what about this mix between functions and executables for the first word? Well, functions that begin with eShell slash are called first. Next in priority are executables on your path, then matching list functions. You can actually switch this order with the eShell prefer list functions variable. Number four, Emacs is actually better than shell. If the following works, why would you call expert or BC or DC or any of those other calculators? you can just call a Lisp expression. Why call less or more when you can call view file? Here, I've aliased less to view file. Let's load it back up and it just shows up in a mode. Just like less, if you hit Q, you go back to your eShell terminal. I do have an improvement though. The problem with view file is that it takes a single file as an argument. In a shell, we might want to view more than one. So let's make a solution to that. This function will call the first function with the first argument, and the second function with each of the rest. This allows me to make a new version of less that calls view file on the first function, but open in another window for each additional file. Number five, better regular expressions. Can't remember regular expressions when calling grep or some other search function? Use the Rx macro. So here I can call rip grep again, but this time I'm using a Lisp expression calling the Rx macro to look for 
all kinds of UUIDs in the files in my current directory. But I have another improvement for this. While the Rx macro is freaking cool for Emacs Lisp, it doesn't always translate to regular expressions accepted by most commands. The, I have no idea how to pronounce this, preckle to L. <laughs> but this project can convert from Lisp regular expressions to the Perl compatible regular expressions acceptable by most search commands. So I've created a new macro here, PRX, that translates the output of the RX macro. So this allows me to type, well, something much more readable and probably easier to remember. A lot easier than this uh, freaking regular expression, right? But I've got even a better improvement. The Rx macro with regular expression snippets can be assigned keywords that I can then take advantage of. Now our command would be much more simpler to type. Number six, loops are better with predicates. Let's say you want to remove the execute bit from files that have it. In a shell like bash, you need both a for loop and an if, as you can see in this example. With each shell, use a predicate to combine into a simple loop. The parent x, after a file glob, filters for only files marked as executable. Now here's an improvement. Since we often type loops to execute one command, what about creating a function that can do this all in one go? This do function splits the arguments on that double colon, where the left side is a single statement to run, the right side is a list of files. I have to kind of append and flatten it in order for it to work. It loops through each file, creating an eShell command with the file appended. With this, I can remove the execute on all CSV files that have it. I see that my example wasn't too good, as most commands like chwand accept multiple files, but you get the idea. In my final larger form uh, on my website, I don't assume the command expression accepts a file as a final argument, as I can replace underscores with the file name. Number seven, the output of the last command. Most shells have a special variable dollar sign question mark for the exit code of the last command. But while reading through the source code, I noticed that the double dollar sign refers to the output of the last command. This seems pretty cool. However, eShell returns true or nil when running external commands. So accessing the file output from a call to ls, it just doesn't work as expected. But this is Emacs, we can fix that. After running any command, eShell sets these four variables. I can hook a function to call after every eshell command. Then using a buffer substring, I store the output into a global variable, and then extend eshell's special variables list. In my Emacs configuration, I turn this variable into a ring, so while double dollar sign works, so does array subscripting on that variable. This allows me to run a command and use the output from that command more than once. The code for this is a bit longer, so you'll need to see my Emacs configuration for details. Number eight, redirection. Okay, output of any command can go to the kill ring, you know, or the clipboard. Think of the implications. You don't have to go into text selection mode, just grab the output. In fact, with our double dollar sign improvement, we can always copy the output from the last command to the clipboard. Better yet, let's write the output to our engineering notebook. Here's my idea. First, create a capture template. It takes a string, or if called interactively, the region, and that does an immediate finish after inserting that string to the default notes file. Next, create a wrapper function to call orgCaptureString that runs that template. 
And finally, we add our new function to eShell Virtual Tar eShell Virtual Targets. Let's see this in action. I have a CSV file of user information. I can use grep and cut to extract some of that and write it out to my this month's November, uh, this month's uh, engineering notebook. Number nine, using Emacs buffers. Why well, leave the results of eShell commands in the eShell buffer? Send the output into a buffer where you can use it. Here's a call to ripgrab that searches for lines with email addresses using a complicated regular expression that I add to my PRX macro. When I switch to this almost grep buffer, I can turn on grep mode, and now I can jump around as if I'd just called grep directly. Now, perhaps I'm proficient with macro, you know, with my PRX macro to filter out entries, but not good with shell commands that I can use in pipes to extract just like one ad the address column, for instance. So let's just extract it send this to a buffer called email list. And now I can use Emacs commands that I know and love to edit the data directly. We currently have an oversight that eShell's built-in cat command doesn't pipe buffer contents as standard in. So I created a bcap, a buffer cat, function to do this. This command works to grab my email addresses that I just extracted and send them to another program. If you're interested, I have a more elaborate and yet simpler workflow uh, surrounding data back and forth from eShell to Emacs buffers. Number 10. Did I mention that you can CD to remote systems? This command uses SSH to jump to my host, Goblin, start a root session, and jump to the Etsy directory. Remember that Tramp can be finicky if you start blinging your remote hosts with oh my Z shell and, you know, funky prompts and things like that. So your mileage may vary. In summary, use eShell if you want a quick way to run commands and Emacs functions as a REPL, or run an OS program but process the output with Emacs. Keep in mind that eShell has two types of subshells, and you can mix and match during a command call. The Rx macro is really cool. eShell loops are better with filters and predicates, well, if you can remember them. Take advantage of Emacs buffers to really enhance your shell experience. You've now seen that just like Emacs, I've crafted eShell to be my own shell creation, tailored to my workflow. So, steal my spells, cast your own magic, but feel free to share your incantations back to me. I've gone over my time allotment, so we'll have to continue this discussion on the inner tubes. Why, yes, I have joined the birdless diaspora, so, uh, took me over there. Thanks.